trying to figure out what kind of makes sense as to how this type of reform should take place or should it take place? Well, I, I think it very definitely needs to take place only because the, uh, the um, um, almost complete collapse of the financial situation um, that occurred last year is, is something that's of major importance. And, and the mere fact that we still have some dangerous situations continuing in the practices of these financial institutions is, is an issue. So while there's a lot of um, hoopla over government intervention and you know government regulations, it's something that has to be done because apparently they couldn't regulate themselves to begin with or we wouldn't have had that problem. Well, part of the, the, the argument is from those people that don't want more regulation is there already are laws on the books. And uh, the watchdog organizations that were out there did not enforce the laws. So is it really something that we need to go back and reassess or maybe we should just enforce the laws that are on the books now? Well, that's some of the issues, but as we know with the situation with the derivatives and, you know, some of this, you know, kind of betting against mm -hmm. mortgages and, you know, betting on certain um, situations to fail became an issue because some people were looking at it as, well, the insurance industry, regu you know, has rules on the books, but then people weren't looking at this as a type of insurance, you know, and so they were getting mm -hmm. around, you know, around the um, laws that existed to begin with. And, um, you know, the the mere fact that we have all this, this situation going on with Goldman Sachs and, you know, them denying that they were doing certain things that um, other people believe that they were means that, if you want to clear your name, then there should be clear-cut rules and regulations that we can see whether or not, you know, practices were violated or not. You know, when I thought about this whole thing, I, I thought about um, cars. And, you know, what does cars have to do with Wall Street? People are like, where's your, your analogy coming? Well, <laughs> it's coming. You know, if you went out and you bought a, a, you bought a used car, right? Or if, you know, they're lemon laws, right? So if the product you bought is misrepresented, it's not functioning properly, okay? is different than what you were told it was, then you can always go back and you can get some type of restitution to the situation. When we look at the situation that happened with Goldman Sachs, not just them, because there are thousands of, as I said before, hedge fund managers who you've never seen their faces nor their names that have done just the same thing, and we had to go in and bail them out, and you haven't really heard much about them. It really talks about the power of uh, the people that are running, who's really running the show. Um, the thing I found interesting about it was that you have a whole system where it's based on, that's based and built on trust. You have people that, are, that have incentives that are built into the system to lie because we have the, those people that rated, rated these particular products. And one guy said, look, I was making $100,000 a, a deal. So my boss was like, hey, I'm not interested in you know saying that this is garbage because we couldn't even figure out what it was, but I'm interested in making the money. Yeah. And so it, Wall Street compromises integrity because it was int more interested in making money. Now, there are several other people that are out there that are still consistently talking about how this was the poor man's, you know, debacle. You know, those people that wanted the American dream, you know, they wanted that house or whatever. Maybe they couldn't afford it. And not only that, but let's talk about those people that could afford it that were given the, the, the wrong type of uh, loan vehicles in terms of those variable, variable rates that they were able to make their payments consistently until they ballooned. So I'm saying to myself, you know, is this really realistic to say that this all falls on the American people and that you know, Wall Street just was doing what it does, it was just doing business as usual? And it's, it's interesting that you mentioned trust because I would think that the members of the financial industry that were not doing the wrong thing mm -hmm. would be advocating this regulation because I'm sure that a lot of people who used to have trust in their stockbrokers, whether it's Lehman Brothers or Goldman Sachs, pro probably are a little bit iffy now. You know, right. when they get that phone call saying, do you want to move your stocks here? They're probably thinking, mm -hmm. well, you know, <laughs> is this for me or is this for you? Right. So you would think that there would be a substantial, hopefully, you know, if most of them were doing what was right, you'd think there'd be a substantial portion of the financial industry that would be on the side of, you know, the government regulation regulation and, you know, clear cut rules and, and regulations, but we're not really hearing that. And I'm sure, you know, when you're in the industry, no one likes to be watched, you know, but if you're doing the right thing, you're doing the right thing. Well, I, I, let, let's just think about it again. I mean, we had to spend billions of dollars. The world economy almost collapsed. If you look at Greece, for example, Greece just had to be bailed out the other day. 
And now they're looking at Portugal with their debt. All of this stuff in connection to these wonderful schemes. And that's what it's called. It's like a shell game. You know, you told you told somebody, that they, you gave somebody a loan. They, the quote-unquote maybe wasn't qualified. Okay, and then you, you did some other things that you tricked people into taking loans they shouldn't have ever qualified, got, or they should have got fixed rates instead of variable rates. You package all this stuff into one big derivative or whatever you want to call it, and you sold it. Then you paid somebody off to say that this is good. This is a triple A, uh, you know, stock versus or a product versus it being the garbage that it was. Then you went out and you bet against it and you made billions. Now, if that's not a shell game. I don't know what it is. Yeah. And, and, you know, all the time, again, we always talk about the media and the responsibility of the media to inform the public. All the time that's being spent, that has been spent in the past on the O.J. Simpson trial and the Anna Nicole Smith situation. I right. mean, you would think that a lot of this information should be spread. You know, we should be covering all of the interviews of these, these executives of the financial institutions so that the public's really aware of what's going on. Because, again, if you know you didn't do something wrong, you should really want to stand up and say, let me prove to you I didn't do anything wrong. But most of this information is just kept, you know, secretive. We hear a little bit of the background, you know, oh, this hearing was held today or, right. you know, things of that nature. But we're really not getting the full story, which is why, as a lot of people have mentioned, you know, in, in recent times, that a lot of the practices are still continuing, the, the practices that almost collapsed the economy.